good morning my dear students welcome back to our next chemistry class today's class we are going to discuss about the new lesson p block elements in your new syllabus p block elements they have given into two part one is p block elements 1 and another one is p block elements 2 in the periodic table where these p block elements are placed in the p block in the periodic table the p block elements are placed in the extreme right side of the periodic table that is from group 13 to group 18 are called p block elements you know already we have learnt in 11 standard properties of s block elements and their compounds important compounds we have learnt in 11 standard and you know totally the elements are classified into four blocks s p d and f block elements so in 11th standard we have discussed s block elements and their compounds properties in 12th standard we are going to discuss about p block element d block elements and f block elements so in this lesson we are going to discuss about p block elements these p block elements are placed in the already i said right side of the periodic table that is from group 13 to group 18 okay there are two part in this p block elements one we are going to discuss about from group number 13 to group number 15 and balance three groups we are going to discuss in the next lesson p block elements part 2 the elements why they are called p block elements why they are called p block elements because these elements lost electron these elements electronic configuration we will write means the lost electron of these elements enters into the p orbitals enters into the p orbital so that's why it is called p block elements and already i said from group 13 to 18 in the modern periodic table are called as in p block elements group 13 family is nothing but in group 13 family the first element present is boron so it is also called boron family in group 14 that is nothing but the first element is carbon so this group 14 is called as carbon family and in group 15 nothing but nitrogen is the first element so it is called as a nitrogen family or we can say nitrogen family we can say nitrogen family group 16 is nothing but oxygen is the first element present in that so it is called oxygen family also it is called chalcogen family because why it is called chalcogen family means most of the or forming elements are present in this group so or forming means chalcogen in the greek word meaning so chalcogen family oxygen family is also called chalcogen family and the next group nothing but fluorine group 17 family the group 17 family the first element is nothing but fluorine in this group 17 family is called as an halogen family because most of these elements exist as ions in the sea water so nothing but halogen means in the greek word salt producer that's why this family is called as an halogen family and the last group nothing but group 18 family are called as an noble gases okay the these elements have quite varied properties and this block contains most of the elements are non metals and few metals also present and metalloids also present you know what is meant by metalloids metalloids is nothing but some elements both exhibit both metallic properties and non metallic properties so they are called as in metalloids non metallic element of this group have more varied properties than the metals so the elements of this 
block and their compounds play an important role in our daily life for example if you take oxygen is present in p block elements only without molecular oxygen we can't imagine the survival of living system yes at the same time the most abundant metal aluminium and its alloys have a plenty of applications from household utensils to parts of aircraft and some semiconducting nature of the elements such as silicon and germanium also used in the field of modern electronics so in this unit already i said we discussed the properties of first three groups group number 13 to 15 of p block elements okay they are called as in boron family carbon family nitrogen family and we are going to discuss about these elements and their compounds also important compounds properties also next we are going to discuss about what are the general trends in properties of p block elements under the general trends in p block elements properties of p block elements the first one we are going to discuss about electronic configuration and oxidation state you know what is meant by electronic configuration we have learned already in lower classes also and 10th 11th standard also we have learned how to write for one element or an atom electronic configuration so electronic configuration of this p block elements if we take means the general electronic configuration is in the outermost cell ns2 np126 what is that n indicate principal quantum number yes you know s orbital and p you know that is p orbital so what is that nothing but outermost electronic configuration of these p block elements is ns2 np126 ns2 np1 is nothing but general electronic configuration of first family in the p block elements what is the first group or first block of elements that is first group or first family present in this p block elements nothing but boron family you know what is the atomic number of boron yes 5 how we can write the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p1 so which is the outer cell for this one second cell is the outer cell for boron so boron is nothing but what in the outermost cell it can have 2s2 2p1 so generally we can write ns2 np1 that is nothing but what is that outermost cell s orbital can have two electrons and p orbital is nothing but one electron that is last electron of this group enters into the p orbital enters into the p orbital okay this is first element of boron family if you take other elements present in the boron family aluminum gallium indium thallium and all if you take means if you write the electronic configuration for these elements the last outermost cell the valence cell can have ns2 np1 to 1 ns2 np1 first boron family 2s2 2p1 boron element 2s2 2p1 next to boron aluminum 3s2 3p1 it can have the outer cell electronic configuration so like that way 4s2 4p1 5s2 5p1 6s2 6p1 like that way will come the boron family elements electronic configuration outer cell electronic configuration next to boron family if you take means carbon family what's the atomic number of carbon 6 how we can write the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p2 that is 2px1 2py1 okay so what is the outer cell second cell only second cell only outer cell so in the second cell outer cell how many electrons it can have it can have two electrons in s orbital and two electrons in p 
orbital so what is that ns2 np2 boron family ns2 np1 and carbon family ns2 np2 okay va if you take carbon family the remaining elements present in the carbon family and if you write the electronic configuration means it that is nothing but in the outermost cell it can have ns2 np2 that n may be differ if it is the second cell or third cell or fourth cell depends upon the principal quantum number it will be differ okay next one next to carbon family nitrogen family nitrogen what is the atomic number of nitrogen 7 how we can write the electronic configuration for nitrogen 1s2 2s2 2p3 okay so outer cell second cell only nitrogen family nitrogen can have outer cell second cell but in second cell there are two electrons in s orbital and three electrons in p orbital so now nitrogen family can have the outer cell electronic configuration is ns2 np3 2s2 2p3 3s2 3p3 next elements 4s2 4p3 like that be the ni nitrogen family elements electronic configuration outermost cell electronic configuration will come next to nitrogen family oxygen family what is the atomic number of oxygen 8 how we can write the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p4 that is nothing but 2,6 in the outermost cell oxygen can have six electrons that six electrons we will put in s orbital 2 the remaining four electrons in p orbital so 2s2 2p4 2s2 2p4 okay if you take the other elements present in the oxygen family if we write the electronic configuration for those elements so the outermost cell electronic configuration you will get ns2 np4 that is nothing but 2s2 2p4 3s2 3p4 4s2 4p4 like that we okay next one what is the <coughs> halogen family first element present fluorine what is the atomic number of fluorine 9 how we can write the electronic configuration 2 comma 7 that is nothing but 1s2 2s2 2p5 so second cell can have two electrons in s orbital and five electrons in p orbital so 2s2 2p5 all the elements present in the halogen family in their outermost cell it can have this type of electronic configuration only nothing but ns2 np5 that is 2s2 2p5 next element next to oxygen 3s2 3p5 4s2 4p5 like that be welcome the last group of this p block elements is nothing but noble gases noble gases can have the outermost cell electronic configuration is nothing but 2s2 2p6 2s2 2p6 that is nothing but noble gases can have the outermost cell completely filled p orbital so it can have the stable electronic configuration or we can say octet electronic configuration okay but it can have a stable we can say it is a stable but it is the least reactive it is the least reactive understood okay so the elements of group 18 inert gas have completely filled p orbitals so they are more stable but less reactivity okay so elements of this block so variable oxidation state still we have discussed the general electronic configuration of p block elements so the general electronic configuration of total p block elements how we can write ns2 np126 each and every family we will take the electronic configuration of outermost cell means the first family boron family ns2 np1 and next carbon ns2 np2 next nitrogen ns2 np3 next what is that oxygen ns2 np4 next halogen ns2 np5 and the noble gases ns2 np6 okay it can have next we are going to discuss about the properties is nothing but properties of p block element is nothing but oxidation state okay now these p block elements so variable oxidation state and their highest oxidation state is equal to the total number of valence electrons present in them okay 
that is nothing but suppose totally how many electrons it can have this p block elements in the outermost cell seven electrons means then seven is the highest oxidation state example if you take halogen family so what is that seven is the valence electrons present in the halogen family so seven so that much highest oxidation state this p block elements exhibit unlike s block elements which so only positive oxidation state some of the p block elements so negative oxidation state also mostly halogens can have a strong tendency to gain an electron and it will become a stable halide ion with a completely filled electronic configuration and hence minus 1 oxidation state also halogens mostly halogens will exhibit minus 1 oxidation state only similarly other elements belonging to nitrogen family that is nitrogen and oxygen family chalcogen groups also so negative oxidation states next metallic nature of p block elements the tendency of an element to form a cation that is how the element will form a cation by losing the electron is known as what we can say electropositive or otherwise we can say metallic character this metallic character depends on the ionization energy of the elements generally while moving down the group from top to bottom ionization energy decreases and hence the metallic character will be increases so on moving down the group metallic character of p block elements increases in p block the elements present in the lower left part are metals and upper right part are non metals elements of group 13 that is nothing but what boron family have metallic character all the elements of metallic character except the element boron which is a metalloid what is meant by metalloid already i said the element which behaves both properties of metals and non metals then we can say that is a metalloid the atomic radius of boron also very small and it has a relatively high nuclear charge and these properties are responsible for its non metallic character yes in the subsequent group that is nothing but in the same group the elements are the elements other elements are nothing but non metals so in the group 13 family only first element boron is a metalloid the remaining if we move from top to bottom non metallic character increases in group 14 elements also carbon is a non metal but um, silicon germanium and all metalloids so in group 15 if you take means nitrogen and phosphorus are non metals arsenic antimony are metalloids so if you take in group 16 oxygen family oxygen sulfur and selenium are non metals but tellurium is a metalloid so all the elements of group 17 and 18 if you take means halogen family and noble gases family if you take means they are non metals only next we are going to discuss about ionization enthalpy of p block elements we have already learned that as we move down the group that is from top to bottom if we move means generally there is a steady decrease in the ionization energy last class last year itself we have discussed in periodic classification lesson that is okay so is a steady decrease in ionization enthalpy or energy of the elements because of increase of atomic radius so in p block elements there are some minor deviations to this general trend that is nothing but if you take in group 13 from boron to aluminium from boron to aluminium ionization energy decreases as expected but from aluminium to thallium there is a marginal difference is there so this is due to nothing but presence of inner d and f electron which has a poor shielding effect shielding effect means what nothing but from uh, between the nucleus and the outermost cell so many inner cells are present means so between the nucleus and the outermost cell electron attraction is shielded by the inner cells means we can say that is a shielding effect so if we take the presence of inner electrons more means d and f electrons means which has a poor shielding effect compared to s and p electrons so as a result the effective nuclear charge on the valence electron increases okay 
same way the similar trend is also observed in group 14 also and the remaining groups 15 to 18 follow general trend so in these groups the ionization energy decreases as we move down the group here poor shielding effect of f and d electrons are overcome by the increased shielding effect of the additional p electrons so the ionization enthalpy or energy of elements successive groups is higher than the corresponding that is nothing but successive group means if you take boron family in p block elements uh, boron family ionization energy how it will become like that way we will take means it will be less compared to the next group example next to boron family is carbon family compared to carbon family elements ionization energy boron family elements ionization energy is less understood okay next topic we are going to discuss is electronegativity electronegativity as we moved what is meant by electronegativity this also we have discussed already in 11th standard the element can have a tendency to attract the sad pair of electron towards itself that is called that property is called as an electronegativity so as we move down 13th group the electronegativity first same way like ionization energy decreases from boron to aluminum and then it will be marginally increases for gallium there of uh, therefore there is a no appreciable change happen so same trend is also observed in group 14th as well also in other group we move down the group the electronegativity only these two group some changes some marginal changes some appreciable changes will be there but if you take the other groups and all if you take means so other groups as we move down the group electronegativity decreases this observed trend can be correlated with the atomic radius okay the next topic we are going to discuss is nothing but anomalous properties of the elements what is meant by anomalous properties if you take in bo in p block elements there are totally six families boron family carbon family nitrogen family oxygen family halogen family and noble gases okay so if you take these blocks that is this group elements if you take means group group 13 to 18 in this group the first member of the elements properties or differ from the other elements present in each group from 13 to 18 that nothing but that difference in that property is nothing but suppose if you take boron in boron family other elements exhibit the same chemical properties means boron will not exhibit that same chemical properties it will be differ from the other elements that property is called as an anomalous property or anomalous nature of elements okay in p block elements the first member of each group differs from the other elements of the corresponding group so why the reason what are the following factors are the responsible for anomalous nature of the first element present in the periodic that is p block elements all the groups the factors what are the three factors they are saying means small size of the first member one first reason the small size compared to other elements present in that corresponding group or otherwise corresponding family the first element is a small size and high ionization enthalpy because already last year itself we have discussed while move from left to right along a period in the periodic table ionization energy will be increases at the same time what will happen move from top to bottom in the periodic table along a group what what is saying that nothing but ionization energy will be decreases at the same time same way electronegativity property also from left to right it will be increases from top to bottom along the group it will be decreases so due to the 
presence of high ionization energy and high electronegativity the other elements if you take in each group of p block elements means compared to first element the other elements electronegativity value and ionization value will be nothing but what they are saying decreases third one absence of d orbitals in their valence cell because the first element present in all the groups of p block elements if you take means all the groups of p block elements if you take means okay small size that is nothing but atomic number is less so these elements can have the absence of d orbitals in their valence cell next in the same topic why the first element of each group varied how it will be varied that we are going to discuss the first member of the group 13 boron is a metalloid but other are reactive metals boron shows the diagonal relationship between with sorry with silicon that is nothing but silicon is present in group 14 boron is the first element in boron family silicon is the second element in carbon family so between these two there is a diagonal relationship next these are the two reasons another one the oxides of boron and silicon are similar in their acidic nature both boron and silicon form covalent bonding that can be easily hydrolyzed also Similarly, except boron trifluoride, halides of both elements are readily hydrolyzed. Next, we are going to discuss about group 14. The first element carbon is strictly non-metal while the other elements are metalloids, silicon, germanium etc. Or metals also present in this group 14 family that is nothing but tin and lead unlike other elements of the group carbon you know already we have discussed in 11 standard carbon forms single bond double bond and triple bond also with carbon and carbon and carbon and hydrogen sorry oxygen carbon and oxygen so unlike other elements of the group carbon can form multiple bonds such as c double bond c c double bond o etc carbon has a greater tendency also to form a chain of bonds with itself or with other atoms which is known as catenation catenation is nothing but one of the property of carbon which can form with the other carbon atom and it form a larger chain of compounds there is a considerable decrease in catenation property down the group carbon can have a more catenation property than that of silicon and than that of germanium germanium and tin more or less equal and greater than that of lead last element next in group 15 also the first element nitrogen differs from the rest of the elements of the group like carbon the nitrogen also can form a multiple bond like n double bond n c double bond n n double bond o etc so nitrogen is a diatomic gas unlike the other members of the group of elements nitrogen is the diatomic gas similarly in group 16 if you take means the first element is oxygen this also exists as a diatomic gas in this group so due to its high electronegativity which one in group 16 oxygen can have a high electronegativity and it forms hydrogen bonds with hydrogen atom next both nitrogen also will form with hydrogen hydrogen bond and oxygen also will form hydrogen bond with hydrogen because both are nothing but nitrogen the nit nitrogen family the nitrogen is the first element in oxygen family oxygen is the first element so both are diatomic gases at the same time both can have a high electronegativity so it forms hydrogen bonds 
the next the first element of the group 17 fluorine is the most electronegative element also behaves quite differently compared to the rest of the members of the group like oxygen it also forms hydrogen bond because in halogen family fluorine is a high electronegativity at the same time the atomic number is very small there is nothing but small size so it is also exhibits what my hydrogen bonds with ox that is hydrogen bonds with what is that fluorine will form a hydrogen bond with hydrogen it shows only minus 1 oxidation state while the other halogens have plus 1 plus 3 plus 5 and plus 7 oxidation states in addition to minus 1 oxidation state fluorine is the strongest oxidizing agent and the most reactive element among the halogens next inert pair effect the next property we are going to discuss is inert pair effect already we know we have learned in 11th standard alkaline and alkaline earth metals have an oxidation state of plus 1 and plus 2 already in this lesson also we have discussed about oxidation state what is when we oxidation state or oxidation number same only the actual charge possessed by an atom of an element in a compound the charge what is the charge possessed on that atom that is the oxidation state or oxidation number so alkali metals and alkaline earth metals can have plus 1 and plus 2 oxidation state so totally how many number of valence electrons are present on that atom depends upon that oxidation state will come example if you take the valence electrons are 2 or 3 means then it can have the what is that oxidation state of plus 3 plus 5 like that way understood okay so in addition they also so variable oxidation state in case of the heavier post transition elements belonging to the group 13 to 16 the most stable oxidation state is 2 less than the group oxidation state and there is a reluctance to exhibit the group of oxidation state so let us consider group 13 elements as we move from boron to heavier elements there is an increasing tendency to have plus 1 oxidation state rather than the group oxidation state plus 3 for example aluminum exhibit aluminum 3 plus and aluminum 1 plus but aluminum 3 plus is more stable than that of aluminum 1 plus while thallium plus 1 is more stable than that of thallium plus 3 aluminum 3 3 chloride is stable whereas thallium 3 chloride is highly unstable because you know one electron thallium suppose losing means it acquired the stable electronic configuration suppose thallium is uh, losing the three electrons means then it is not possible for thallium to acquire the octet or stable electronic configuration that time thallium 3 oxidation state is a less stable or unstable compared to thallium 1 at the same time if you take aluminum aluminum can have a three electrons in the valence cell 3s2 3p1 that 3p1 electron it's losing means it is not possible to acquire the octet electronic configuration in the valence cell aluminum so aluminum 1 plus is nothing but it is the least stable or unstable compared to aluminum 3 plus why means aluminum Uh, in in its valence cell it can have a three electrons that three electron is losing means that time aluminum acquire the nearest electronic configuration like neon stable electronic configuration so aluminum 3 chloride compared to aluminum 1 chloride is more stable understood so this shows that in <coughs> so thus in heavier post transition metals the outer s electrons have a tendency to remain inert so in this p block elements okay outermost that is nothing but heavier post transition metals if you take means it can have that is in the outer s electrons ns electrons it can have that outer ns electron can have a less tendency or otherwise we can say that ns electrons remains inert inert what is the meaning for inert not active or passive and so reluctance to take part in the bonding that's why it is not taking part for bonding which is known as inert pair effect so inert pair effect is nothing 
but the availability of availability of what is that bonding in less availability of bonding in ns electrons of p block elements is called as an inert pair if i so this effect is also observed in group 14 15 and 16 also it will be observed okay next one allotropes what is meant by allotropy and what is meant by allotropism okay most of the p block elements exhibit allotropy or allotropism what is meant by allotropy it is nothing but it is the property of the element okay which can exist more than one crystalline or molecular form in the same physical state that property of that element is called as an allotropy the phenomenon is called as an allotropy some already we have learnt in 10th standard that is nothing but carbons allotropes are graphite fullerene diamond understood so that is nothing but what allotropy of carbon or allotropes of carbon okay so the phenomenon is called as an allotropy allo means in the greek word uh, what is that another and trope means what is that change so another form another form we can say and the different forms of an element are called as an allotropes many p block elements so allotropism and some of the common allotropes are listed in your book like a tabular column boron if you take means amorphous boron orthorhombic boron tetragonal boron like that way carbon means diamond graphite fullerene graphene carbon nanotubes etc like that way germanium alpha germanium beta germanium oxygen dioxygen ozone sulfur rhombus sulfur monoclinic sulfur selenium red selenium gray selenium black selenium selenium like that way uh, most of the p block elements exhibits allotropes that allotropes they have given in the book next we are going to discuss about group 13 family group 13 family is nothing but boron family in boron family if you take means uh, how, what are the elements present in boron family boron aluminium gallium indium thallium boron aluminium gallium indium thallium what is the symbol for boron b aluminium al gallium ga indium in and what is the symbol for thallium tl understood okay so boron family or we can say what is that group 13 family occurrence of the group 13 family elements we are going to discuss mostly boron occurs as borates and its important ores are borax and kernite aluminium is the most abundant metal and occur as oxides and also it is found in alumino silicate rocks commercially it is extracted from its chief ore bauxite al2o3.2h2o is the formula for bauxite the other elements of this group if you take means only trace amounts only it will be present the other elements what are the other elements gallium indium thallium occur as their sulfides boron and aluminum as their oxides and gallium indium thallium occur as their sulfides if you take gallium present in the group is nothing but it can have low melting point and gallium metal is melted in our palm itself understood and thallium is nothing but it is one of the toxic element understand or not so what are the five elements present in the boron family boron aluminum gallium indium thallium next we are going to discuss about some of the physical properties of boron family elements physical state all the five elements in this group are solid state and you know the atomic number also for boron 5 aluminum 13 gallium 31 49 for indium and 81 for thallium if you write the electronic configuration for these all the five elements the outermost cell it can have three electrons that is nothing but in s orbital two electron and p orbital one electron so it can have the electronic configuration ns2 np1 
understood next one we are going to discuss about the physical properties like boiling point also they are given in the book and density atomic radius atomic radius from boron to aluminium decreases again gallium to thallium it will be increases and if you take the boiling point from boron to thallium it will be decreases boron more and the remaining it will be decreases decreases till thallium and melting point if you take means nothing but boron can have a high melting point than that of aluminium but if we move from boron to uh, what is the thallium what do, what happen for melting point decreases decreases and finally in indium and thallium it will be increases decreases and then increases okay understood next we are going to discuss about chemical properties of boron under the chemical properties of boron nothing but many of its compounds are electron deficient if you take boron family elements if you take and it that is it form the compound in that compound how these boron family elements are means they are electron deficient and has a unusual type of covalent bonding which is due to the small size and high ionization energy okay so first under the chemical properties of boron first one we are going to discuss is formation of metal borides formation of metal borides many metals except alkali metals except alkali metals boron combined with the other metals means it will form borides with the formula mx and by okay so direct combination of metals with boron chromium example chromium combined with number of molecules of or number of atoms of boron under 1500 kelvin it will form chromium what boride cr bn times next one reduction of boron trihalides suppose boron trihalide like bcl3 bcl5 b b b b or 3 boron tribromide so like that way if we take the boron trihalides and that will be there is more uh, reduction of reduction of that will be undergo reduction boron trihalide will undergo reduction with metal assisted by dihydrogen gives metal boride so nothing but bcl3 boron trichloride combined with metal like tungsten in the presence of what hydrogen because reduction means addition of hydrogen under 1500 kelvin it will form what tungsten boride and chlorine gas and hydrogen chloride all will be removed next one formation of hydrides formation of hydrides this boron trifluoride combined with metallic hydride like sodium hydride nothing but bf3 plus nah in the presence of 450 kelvin it will form b2h6 nothing but what they are saying diborane by the removal of what naf sodium fluoride as the product so boron does not react directly with hydrogen however it forms a variety of hydrides it's called as an boranes so the simplest boron borane is diborane diborane formula is nothing but b2h6 so how diborane is occurred or manufactured means boron trifluoride combined with metallic hydride like sodium hydride so that time diborane will be occurred by the removal of what they are saying naf so formation of boron trihalides formation of boron trihalides nothing but what is that boron combined with halogen example if you take boron boron combined with generally halogens means x2 so b plus x2 will give what as the product b x3 as the product okay next one formation of boron nitride nothing but boron burns with dinitrogen at high temperature it form boron nitride nothing but b plus n2 will give bn formation of oxides next one boron heated with oxygen boron and oxygen under 900 kelvin it will be heated means then it will form nothing but boron tri oxide as the product next one reaction with acid and alkali okay boron react with acid like sulfuric acid and acid like nitric acid acid like sulfuric acid and acid like 
nitric acid what will happen it will form boric acid as the product at the same time boron combined with sulfuric acid means it will be remove sulfur trioxide boron combined with nitric acid means by the uh, main product boric acid and the by product is nothing but what they are saying nitrogen dioxide so there is before this sulfur dioxide and here nitrogen dioxide so sulfuric acid will be uh, heated with boron means sulfur dioxide gases liberated boron is heated with nitric acid means nitrogen dioxide gas will be liberated next boron under the same topic boron react with the fused sodium hydroxide fused sodium hydroxide and the forms what sodium borate as the product so boron plus NaOH will give Na3BO4 that is nothing but what Na3BO3 sodium borate by the removal of H2 by the removal of H2 okay so boron react with fused sodium hydroxide fused sodium hydroxide that is nothing but molten sodium hydroxide it forms sodium borate so the equation how we can write means 2B plus 6 NaOH gives 2 Na3BO3 plus 3 H2 gas will be liberated next one uses of boron Boron has the capacity to absorb neutrons. Boron has the capacity to absorb neutrons. Hence, the its isotope. It's one of the isotope. What is one of the isotope of boron? B510 is used as a moderator in nuclear power generator or nuclear reactor so first uses is nothing but it is used as a what moderator in nuclear reactors next one amorphous boron is used as a rocket fuel igniter amorphous boron is used as a rocket fuel igniter and boron is essential for the cell walls of plants boron is the essential for the cell walls of plants Okay. Fourth use of boron is compounds of boron have many applications. For example, it is used in eye drops, antiseptic washing powders, etc. Contains boric acid and borax. So, in the manufacture of pyrex glass, boric oxide is used. Next, we are going to discuss the next compounds of boron is nothing but that is first compound before this we have discussed about boron uh, preparation properties uses next we are going to discuss about um, first boron compound is nothing but borax you know what is the formula for borax na2b4o7 dot 10 h2o this is the formula for borax how it will be prepared it will be prepared from columnite ore columnite ore columnite ore is nothing but ca2b6o11 columnite ore formula ca2b6o11 this will be this solution this columnite solution will be treated with sodium carbonate sodium carbonate so that time we are getting the product main product is na2b4o7 nothing but borax and calcium carbonate calcium hydroxide also will be removed next borax is the normally formulated how it will be normally formulated means Na2B4O7 dot 10H2O but it contains tetra nuclear units that is nothing but B4O7 OH four times this form is known as prismatic form borax also exists two other forms namely dweller or octahedral borax and borax glass also there that is also formula is same Na to B four O seven. Next properties under the borax properties. First one we are going to discuss is it will undergo hydrolysis. Nothing but borax is basic in nature. So its solution in hot water is alkaline. Its solution in hot water is alkaline as it dissociates into boric acid and sodium hydroxide. So Na two B four O seven plus seven H two O gives four H three B O three boric acid acid formula H3BO3 by the removal of two molecules of sodium hydroxide NaOH. 
Next, on heating, it forms a transparent borax beads. It is called as, and this test is called as an borax bead test. Very important. Two mark or three mark question. Borax bead test. For that borax bead test, this borax is used. So, borax will be heated. Means, totally all the molecules, 10 molecules of water will be removed. And it will give what? Na2, B4O7. Again, that will be heated means it will form sodium metaborate and boron trioxide will be formed. Okay, so this is nothing but transparent borax beads. Next, borax react with acids to form sparingly soluble boric acid. Example, if you take, so borax will be treated with solution of hydrochloric acid. It will form boric acid and sodium chloride will be removed. Na2B4O7 plus 2HCl plus 7H2O will give 4H3BO3 plus 2NaCl. Same way, borax is treated with sulfuric acid in the presence of water. It will give boric acid and sodium sulfate as the product. Okay, next one, when it is treated with ammonium chloride, what is the formula for ammonium chloride NH4Cl? So, Na2B4O7 combined with ammonium chloride, it will form two molecules of NaCl at the same time. That is, Na and Cl will be removed as an NaCl. Boron and nitrogen will form boron nitride and boron and oxygen will form boron trioxide and water molecule will be removed. Next, uses of borax. Borax is used for the identity identification of colored metal ions boron is used for the identification of colored metal ions and it is used in the manufacture of optical and borosilicate glass enamels and glasses for pottery okay pottery glasses we can say pottery glasses for the manufacture of borosilicate glass and optical glass enamels and what pottery glass Next one, it is also used as a flux in metallurgy. It is also used as a flux in metallurgy. Why? The purpose we are adding the flux in metallurgy due to the extraction of uh, um, metals from the ores. It is nothing but to reduce the fusion temperature of the mixer. For that only we are adding the flux in metallurgy and also act as a preservative also. Also act as a preservative also. Understood? Okay, next one, boric acid, boric acid, only preparation we can see now. What is the formula for boric acid? H3BO3, H3BO3, what is the formula for boric acid? H3BO3, understood? Okay, so now the preparation, boric acid is prepared from nothing but columnite ore and borax. Okay, so borax we are taking. What is the formula for borax? Already we have discussed Na2B4O7. What is the columnite ore formula? Ca2B6O11. So this will be treated with what? Sulfuric acid in the presence of water. Borax will be treated with sulfuric acid in the presence of water. Sodium sulfate and boric acid will be formed. Columnite ore is treated with sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide. It will form what as the product? Calcium bisulfite as the product and the main product is nothing but boric acid. So this is the method of pro preparation of what? Boric acid. What is the formula for boric acid? H3BO3. Understood. Next properties. Boric acid will undergo hydrolysis. Boric acid will undergo hydrolysis because it is a colorless transparent crystal. It is a very weak monobasic acid also and it accepts hydroxyl ion rather than the donating the proton. So BOH thrice also boric acid formula. H3BO3 also boric acid formula. So it will be treated with two molecules of water. It will form H3O plus plus BOH four times minus so it react with sodium hydroxide which one react with sodium hydroxide nothing but h3bo3 react with sodium hydroxide it will form sodium metaborate as the product at the same time now boric acid also treated with two molecules of sodium hydroxide it will form na2b4o7 nothing but what borax and it will form what as the product uh, water as the byproduct
ओके एन ए हेच प्लस एच थ्री बी ओ थ्री विल गिव एन ए बी ओ टू प्लस टू हेच टू ओ एन ए टू एन ए हेच प्लस फोर हेच थ्री बी ओ थ्री गिवस एन ए टू बी फोर ओ सेवन प्लस हेच टू ओ नेक्स्ट वन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबउट बोरिक एसिड एक्शन ऑफ हीट ओके बोरिक एसिड विल अंडर गो हीट अंडर थ्री सेवेंटी थ्री कैलविन इट विल फॉर्म सोडियम इट विल फॉर्म मेटाबोरिक एसिड दैट इज नथिंग बट वॉट इट विल बी फॉर्म फर्स्ट एज द प्रोडक्ट मेटाबोरिक एसिड एज द प्रोडक्ट आफ्टर दैट दैट मेटाबोरिक एसिड विल बी हीटेड अंडर द टेम्परेचर ऑफ फोर थर्टीन कैलविन इट विल फॉर्म टेट्रा बोरिक एसिड एज द प्रोडक्ट अगेन इट विल अंडर गो रेड हॉट इट विल अंडर गो रेड हॉट विच वन दैट टेट्रा बोरिक एसिड हेच टू बी फोर ओ सेवन विल अंडर गो रेड हॉट इट विल गिव वाट एज द प्रोडक्ट बोर ऑन ट्राई ऑक्साइड एज द प्रोडक्ट बै द रिमूवल ऑफ वाटर मॉलिकल वन अगेन ऐ विल रिपीट एक्शन ऑफ हीट ऑफ बोरिक एसिड बोरिक एसिड विल बी हीटेड अंडर थ्री सेवेंटी थ्री कैलविन इट विल फॉर्म सोडियम मेटा दट इज मेटा बोरिक एसिड एज द प्रोडक्ट एंड दट मेटा बोरिक एसिड इज अगेन ट्रीटेड विथ ओके आर अदरवेज हीटेड विथ अंडर फोर थर्टीन कैलविन फोर वन थ्री कैलविन इट विल फॉर्म वॉट एज द प्रोडक्ट हेच टू बी फोर वॉट इज दट ओ सेवन एज द प्रोडक्ट टेट्रा बोरिक एसिड दट टेट्रा बोरिक एसिड विल अंडर गो रेड हॉट हीट एंड इट विल गिव पोर ऑन ट्राई क्लोर दट ट्राई ऑक्साइड एज द प्रोडक्ट एंड बाई द रिमूवल ऑफ वाटर मॉलिक्यूल नेक्स्ट वन एक्शन ऑफ अमोनिया एक्शन ऑफ अमोनिया इज कॉल्ड एस एन अमोनालिसिस वॉट इज दट अमोनालिसिस सो वॉट दे आर सेंग बोरिक एसिड कंबाइंड विथ अमोनिया बोरिक एसिड कंबाइंड विथ अमोनिया इट विल फॉर्म बोर ऑन नाइट्राइड एंड वाटर मॉलिक्यूल विल बी removed next boric acid combined with ethyl alcohol in the presence of concentrated nitric acid sorry concentrated sulfuric acid it will undergo what ma it will react with boric acid react with ethyl alcohol okay in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid it will form a green edged flame and this reaction is used to identify the presence of borate presence of what they are saying borate as the product ओके नेक्स्ट वन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ बोर ऑन ट्राई फ्लोराइड ओके हाउ बोरिक एसिड इज हेल्प और यूजफुल फॉर द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ और फॉर्मेशन ऑफ बोर ऑन ट्राई फ्लोराइड मीन्स कैल्शियम फ्लोराइड सी ए एफ टू इज ट्रीटेड विथ सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड एंड बोरिक एसिड दट टाइम कैल्शियम एंड सल्फेट विल बी रिमूव एज कैल्शियम सल्फेट हेच एंड ओ विल बी रिमूव एज एन वाटर मॉलिकूल एंड टू मॉलिकूल्स ऑफ बोर ऑन ट्राई फ्लोराइड विल बी फॉर्म बी एफ थ्री ओके बोराक्स वेन हीटेड विथ सोडा एस इट गिवस बोराक्स वॉट इट गिवस बोराक्स सो एन ए टू सी ओ थ्री प्लस एच थ्री बी ओ थ्री आर फोर आर वी कैन से हाउ फॉर बोरिक एसिड फॉर्म लाइन एदर एच थ्री बी ओ थ्री वी कैन से आर वी कैन से फोर बी ओ हेच थ्राइस सो इट विल गिव बोराक्स एन ए टू बी फोर ओ सेवन बाई द रिमूवल ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड वाटर नेक्स्ट स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ बोरिक एसिड बोरिक एसिड हेज ए टू डायमेंशनल लेयर्ड स्ट्रक्चर ओके इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ बी ओ थ्री थ्री माइनस क्वाइट दट इज बोरिक एसिड हेज ए टू डायमेंशनल लेयर स्ट्रक्चर टू डायमेंशनल लेयर स्ट्रक्चर and it contains what it contains bo3 3 minus unit and these are linked to each other by hydrogen bonds as shown in the figure next boric acid uses uses of boric acid boric acid is used in the manufacture of pottery glasses enamels and pigments it is used as an antiseptic and eye lotion and it is also used as a food preservative also okay thank you